Now this illustration deals with ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel in accordance with 210.8. We're on page uh, 80 of the NEC if you're tagging along. And the purpose of the change was mainly to clarify that a listed Class A ground fault protection receptacle should be installed in a readily accessible location. Now that's coming out the gate. The GFCI receptacle has to be in a readily accessible location as defined in Article 100 of the code. And then, of course, we install and protect in accordance with 210.8A through F of the NEC. Now, the types of GFCI protective devices, if uh, one wanted to read up on them in great detail, look at NFPA 70B, and it would be Chapter 13, 13.1.1. But notice we kind of illustrate them in the illustration. You could have a circuit breaker that provides GFCI protection, AFCI protection, short circuit, ground fault, and overload protection all in one breaker. Or you could have a cord set that had a GFCI protective uh, device uh, installed within that cord set. Uh, or you could have a portable type GFCI. Or you could have a GFCI receptacle itself. And either method used, either type used, when we card and plug connect into that uh, protective circuit of GFCI protection, then we're going to provide a leakage current and a safe installation for the user of a GFCI protected system. Now this illustration deals with GFCI protection uh, for personnel, uh, outdoor outlets, so to speak. And uh, of course, this just kind of gives you a general area of specific locations where GFCI protection is required for outlets, such as uh, inside the garage, uh, crawl spaces, basements unfinished, you know, areas like that. But this deals with outside receptacles. You have an outside receptacle here on a boat dock. You see where the boat is in the water. And you can read more about this requirement in uh, 555.35C on page 529 of the NEC. And then, of course, the note tells us right above the uh, boat dock area, that any of these receptacles outside are replaced that are not GFCI, then they would need to be a GFCI protected type receptacle outlets in accordance with 210.8F1 through 3. But now I would like to call out to you that there is no uh, ground fault protection of a circuit supplying an AC air conditioner unit. And of course, you know, we looked at that earlier in exception 2 to 210.8F. F in the NEC. So on page 81, you can uh, read about 210.8F in these outside receptacles and the requirements that are outlined there for such receptacles. This illustration deals with GFCI protection for personnel for specific appliances. Now notice in 210.8D, excuse me, on page 81, we have appliances listed 1 through 12 that are listed. But if we went over to 422.5A for particular types of appliances, on page 318, we'd only see 1 through 7 listed for those type of appliances that are listed there. But they're kind of similar sections that uh, list these items. Now, the main purpose of the change that you see on page 81 of the NEC uh, basically deals with electrical appliances to be GFCI protected in accordance with 210.8D. And you get uh, other appliances that are required in 422.5A when you look at those appliances and compare the two sections. But I would like to call those two out to you because I think it's important to have that. Now, this is a vending machine that you see here, and we're going to have a GFCI receptacle for cord and plug connected equipment that would be present there. And if it's not a receptacle, then naturally it, it would be a, a circuit breaker that has the GFCI protection scheme uh, with it. And, and of course, you know, it... Uh, 
that receptacle could, uh, but could be located accordingly. Now, that's what this uh, uh, section deals with. It's uh, GFCI protection for personnel for Pacific appliances here in accordance with 210.8D1 through D12, but the appliance listed here is 210.8D uh, on page 81, and that is the purpose of this change in the 2023 edition of the NEC. This illustration deals with other than dwelling units, aquariums, uh, bait wells, and similar openings that uh, are declared such an opening by the authority having jurisdiction in accordance with uh, 90.4. And the purpose of the change is really kind of highlighted in the note to the right-hand side top of the aquarium there. And notice aquariums, bait wells, and similar uh, open uh, type vessels are containers that are outlined in 210.8B13. If that receptacle is located within six foot, as you see, of the uh, ed inside edge uh, of the rim, then the GFCI protection uh, would be required in accordance with 210.8B13. And again, you know, in your code book, you're on uh, page 80, and that is the main uh, purpose uh, of this change. Now, we're still dealing with other than dwelling units, but this time it's GFCI protection for the sink area in accordance with 210.8B7. Now, notice in the uh, illustration, and before we look at the illustration, let's just drop down for the purpose of the change. And the code making panel accepted and added a revision that addresses GFCI protection for receptacle outlets located within six foot of the inside wall of the sink. As you see here in the illustration, we have uh, four uh, receptacles here that are located within six foot of that sink, so they need to be GFCI protected for personnel using blenders, mixers, coffee pots, a toaster, and so forth, because they're working in and around a wet sink. And, and of course, it tells you any receptacle that is cord and plug connected uh, type appliance located within six foot of the sink need to be GFCI protected and, um, uh, in accordance to 210.8B7. Now, uh, we're on page 80 of the NEC, uh, if you want to review it, or again, this review our uh, uh, Stockholm's Illustrated Code Change book, and you'll, you'll have this information of, available to you. But, uh, you know, basically speaking, uh, the receptacle, if you look below the uh, area there, uh, it has to be uh, readily Access, accessible in a manner. So you could have maybe a regular receptacle there with a circuit breaker, this GFCI protected uh, type breaker that would protect that outlet. So it's always using your head. If the uh, receptacle is not readily accessible, then I need to protect it with some other means, usually, and that's a circuit breaker uh, in your panel board. And that's what this purpose of change is all about is these receptacles located within six foot of the inside wall of the sink that requires GFCI protection for personnel. Now this illustration also deals with other than dwelling units, GFCI protected receptacles, in accordance with NEC 210.8B4, other than dwelling units. Now the purpose of the change was to add a new item for which you see at the very left-hand side, top of the uh, illustration, you see that a buffet area for serving food must have these receptacles, re excuse me, receptacles installed as needed in accordance with 210.8B4. So these receptacles you see at the bottom of the illustration are receptacles with GFCI protection for serving the B, uh, buffet area in accordance with 210. Dot eight B four. Now, if you want to look up this requirement in the code, it's on page eighty, or just look at Stalkup's Illustrated Code Change Book, and we have the uh, information there handy for you. 
So uh, this illustration is dealing with GFCI protected receptacles in accordance with 210.8B4 in other than dwelling units and its areas that where food and uh, beverages and things like that are being served. And this illustration just shows a buffet area. This illustration deals with other than dwelling units and it deals with sinks in accordance with 210.8B3. Now as a user of the NEC and installer of such receptacles that we're talking about here, always remember that 210.8A is dwelling units. 210.8B is other than dwelling units. And your purpose of change on page 80 of the NEC really is outlined in note one. A sink shall have a GFCI receptacle installed in areas where uh, permanent provisions for food preparation, such as beverage or cooking. And notice uh, the note too says, yeah, in such areas could be coffee shops, uh, ice cream parlors, and so forth. But these receptacles located in around the sink and in a uh, area that you see illustrated uh, have to be GFCI protected, and they're other than dwelling units, which you know in the last couple cycles of the code have really been expanded to protect people working in and around these areas with cord and plug connected type equipment that leakage current might occur and be a hazard to the user of that particular, uh, you know, uh, tool or equipment, whatever they may be using. So uh, this uh, illustration, 210.8B3, uh, 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 deals with such areas. Now this illustration deals with dwelling units, factory installed receptacles. In accordance with 210.8A exception number four. Now we'll be on page 80 of the NEC. And the main purpose of this change, the code panel accepted a new exception 4 to 210.8a that basically stated that receptacles that were, that were available in manufacturing equipment that wasn't really readily accessible to the user, like a, a ceiling fan that you see here, not a ceiling fan, but a vent fan. And you can see that in the illustration where well, that receptacle would not have to be GFCI protected uh, at all because it's not a readily accessible at all. Uh, it, you know, it's up in the ceiling area usually, so we, we don't have to worry about that. And then for fire alarm systems and a similar rule, uh, just refer to 760.41B and 761.21B in the NEC. And then, of course, Article 100, 110.3B and C as well as 210.8A exception 4 deals with these types of receptacles located in factory uh, install type receptacles uh, when they're not you know considered read accessible by the authority having jurisdiction in accordance with 90.4 in the NEC. Now this illustration deals with uh, dwelling units uh, sinks so to speak in accordance to 210.8A7. And the purpose of the change is it's just a new uh, subdivision or, uh, that deals with clarity that GFCI protection must be provided, as you see in the note, right above the receptacles there, pointing to the sink and the receptacles. And sinks shall have a GFCI receptacle installed in areas where now, the areas it's talking about is permanent provisions for food preparation, beverage, or cooking. Now these sinks locations, you can look at 210.8A8 that deals with dwelling units. 210.8B7 uh, deals with other than dwelling units. And then of course installation of these types of receptacles is 406.5G2. So we uh, recommend you review uh, those sections also. And, uh, of course, now we're uh, reviewing 210.8A7. Now, this illustration, uh, again, deals with GFCI protection for personnel in the kitchen area. Now, 
notice uh, a cla at the very top of the illustration. Let's let's look at the the top of the illustration and a listed class A GFCI uh, protection. A required outlet is required in accordance to 210.8a, and uh, and of course you need you need two circuits in the kitchen, uh, small plant circuits which we have here. The definition of a kitchen is in Article 100 on page 45. A feeder GFCI protection is also uh, defined in Article 100. 215.9 uh, defines a, P, a feeder and GFCI protection. And then notice your receptacle locations uh, is outlined in 210.52A4 uh, on page 87. And we also suggest you review pages 299 uh, and 300 to give you more information about these receptacles located uh, in the kitchen uh, area. Now, the main purpose uh, of the change, uh, it's a revision. And it was added by the code panel to recognize that a Class A GFCI circuit really is different than a Class B GFCI. But it uh, kind of implements that if you have a receptacle, as you see there at the sink area below it, that if it's within six foot of the inside wall of that sink, it needs to be a GFCI uh, protected receptacle. But also it just basically states that regardless uh, of whether the receptacle serve the countertop or not, they need to be a GFCI protected type receptacle. Now this illustration deals with ground fault protection for personnel in accordance to 210.8A6 and as you can see it kind of deals with dishwashers and it does require GFCI protection for a dishwasher which is further, uh, gives you further information that this requirement uh, must be met in accordance with 422.5A7 on page 318 of the NEC, as well as 210.8D as in dog on page 81 of the NEC. Now basically, uh, 210.8A6 GFCI protection for personnel is on page 80 of the NEC. And then, of course, you have a couple of call-outs here telling you, you know, GFCI protection for countertops with a wall behind uh, the uh, countertop and so forth, as well as it calls for the uh, surface-mounted uh, type GFCI protected outlets up to a certain height. You can find all that information in the uh, black type print that you see there. So, uh, with this thought in mind, then this illustration just uh, deals with GOCI protection for personnel in accordance with 210.8A6. And the purpose of the change was mainly just to revise 210.A6 and uh, to add clarity that all card and plug connected appliances in the kitchen shall be uh, GFCI protected for the safety of the user of such outlets.